We start the show with new revelations about the Wagner uprising. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the head of the mercenary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, wanted to detain the chiefs of Russia's armed forces in his rebellion. The paper says the defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, and the chief of the general staff, Valery Gerasimov, discovered the planned uprising and were able to avoid being captured by Wagner troops. The New York Times separately claims a high-ranking Russian general had advanced knowledge of Prigozhin's plants. The Kremlin denies all of these claims. And we can now bring in DW's Russia analyst, Konstantin Egad. He joins us from the Lithuanian capital, Vilnius. Konstantin, good to see you again. So these are two extraordinary reports today coming from two American newspapers. How credible are they? Well, I suppose that they are credible, although one always has to take these reports with a pinch of salt because definitely we are in the middle of information war between Russia and the rest of the world, or the rest of the West at least. So we may have something that's been fed by security services to deliberately sort of inflame the situation in Putin's entourage. But frankly, all the indirect, um, indirect uh, proofs are there, including Mr. Prigozhin's uh, angry rant on, uh, I think it was Friday evening or Saturday morning, on his Telegram channels in, in which he said this covered choig, meaning the defense minister, escaped from Rostov. Seems like he was really, really very, very sincere in his anger. And uh, he definitely, I think, uh, was pretty straightforward about his desire to uh, remove these two people from power. And uh, that means probably get control over them. But they did escape him. Mm -hmm. And the New York Times suggests that General Sergei Surovikin had advanced knowledge of Prigozhin's plans. What role does he play in the Kremlin's power circle? Well, Nicole, probably mm, he doesn't play any role anymore because in the last hour and a half, two hours, uh, the pro-Kremlin telegram channels started reporting, and I can't confirm it, that uh, General Surovikin uh, was arrested by the FSB, the secret police, and is now in its high-security Moscow jail. It's not confirmed, but he did disappear uh, from everyone's sight uh, in Saturday after having delivered a very unconvincing plea to the Wagner mercenaries to uh, not to proceed with their mutiny. He seemed to be seemed to be a little bit inebriated and uh, not very much comfortable. It, to some people here in, uh, in, in, in Vilnius, uh, watching it, uh, my security services sort of analysts, uh, friends, that they, they, it looked a bit like it was like a hostage video. Uh, so maybe he did know about it. And frankly, the suspicion is that he probably also was part of the plan to remove Gerasimov and Shoigu. And if this is true, then we are talking about uh, something absolutely extraordinary. Look, Sorovikin is a former commander of the uh, Operation Ukraine. He is still officially commander of the Russian aerospace forces, air and space forces. So uh, he's general of the army and hero of Russia. He's one of the most high-ranking military people in the country, if he was indeed part of something very untoward, uh, then, of course, it is absolutely sensational and will prove probably what uh, The New York Times and The Wall Street Journal reported. Yeah. Uh, let's return to these claims that Prigozhin plotted to capture the defense minister Shoigu and, and General Gerasimov. Do we know anything about how close he actually got to them? Well, it seems that they were in Rostov a few hours before uh, before Prigozhin launched his march. Now, what uh, details we have from these newspaper, newspaper reports and uh, other sort of uh, media speculation uh, is that uh, the FSB, the Putin's put, Putin's secret police, learned about the plot to capture uh, Shoigu and Gerasimov uh, actually a few hours or a day before it was supposed to be launched and warned the two, and they escaped from Rostov. Uh, that's why Prigozhin was so angry. And that means that he had to start his operation uh, on the hop, and that's why it basically went, went, went wrong. Uh, but we do not have an independent confirmation of that. What we do know, though, is that uh, both seem to be 
pretty much secure, uh, which cannot be uh, said about um, Surovikin, who disappeared, and we still don't know uh, what happened to Prigozhin. As DW's Russia analyst, Konstantin Egad from Vilnius, think it's always great to get your view on things. Thank you. Moving on, staying on the same topic, we can now talk to Nikolai Petrov of the German Institute for International and Security Affairs. Welcome to DW. Do you find the reports of these American newspapers credible? Uh, yes, right. And uh, in my view, not only uh, Prigozhin did have uh, strong connection to top-ranked uh, military, including General Suravikin, but also he was backed somehow by uh, certain uh, generals uh, at uh, FSB uh, and Rosguardia and other law enforcement and security agencies in Russia. And it's pretty well known, by the way, that uh, deputy head of Wagner Group uh, is Mikhail Mizintsev, who until very recently was deputy minister of defense. Mm -hmm. and what evidence do you have for that, especially the ties to the FSB? I think uh, that without uh, very serious support and go ahead, uh, Prigozhin uh, would be not capable to undertake moves he uh, did undertake and to, uh, to be so, uh, well, uh, perfectly well prepared for this. Mm -hmm. But it's speculation, everything at this point. Uh, what conclusions, knowing what we know, can be drawn about the power struggle in Russia that is going on right now? Uh, I think it's possible to describe this power struggle, in my view at least, as uh, the uh, struggle between uh, two different groups for uh, how to continue the war. And it's possible to say that there is uh, the group, uh, the clan, uh, for escalating uh, the war in Ukraine, and there is a more moderate group. And it looks now like uh, those who are in favor of escalation, those who backed uh, Prigozhin, uh, did benefit uh, from this uh, uh, mutiny most of all, and uh, they do dominate now. Mm -hmm. uh, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that Putin has come out of this significantly weakened. Kiev says the countdown towards Putin's demise has begun. Is that wishful thinking, or is there some truth to that? I think it's absolutely true, and uh, the fight we've seen recently was not aimed uh, to replace Putin, because Putin's replacement in his present-day capacity is almost impossible, and it would create chaos. Uh, none, none of elite groups uh, could be interested in this, but it was the fight for uh, putting pressure on to Putin and uh, being much weaker now after this attemptive coup. Uh, he is much more capable uh, to take uh, the move towards escalation of the war. Mm -hmm. Prigozhin is said to be in Belarus. Is this the end of the Wagner Group's involvement in the war in Ukraine? Uh, I think so, although it has been announced that a good portion of former Wagner Group uh, will sign contracts with the Ministry of Defense. Uh, it means that uh, they will be part of the ministry and uh, they will be no more uh, a separate unit, not to speak about the unit uh, which would be somehow opposed to ordinary military units and which could be that uh, effective as Wagner Group uh, used to be. That was Nikolai Petrov with the German Institute for International and Security Affairs. Thank you for your time. My pleasure.